Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to fine tune Llama 3. Llama 3 is the newest LLM by Meta AI. In the coming weeks, guys, they are again going to release a multimodal LLM as well. So stay tuned for that. Now, Meta AI has released Llama 3 trained on 15 trillion tokens. Llama 2 was trained on 2 trillion, so it's 15 more 7x even more than 7x right so imagine the uh, millions of dollars have been spent on llama 3 why open source community guys facebook has tons of data like meta ai has tons of data from their facebook instagram whatever and they can leverage all these data you know to train these kind of llms uh, of course there are public data available reddit wikipedia and blah 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 now Meta has released Llama 3. Everybody is using it, performing really well on the leaderboards. Have you know fantastic reasoning capabilities, as people have said it. But how can you fine tune it? That's the question. Now there are different ways of fine tuning an LLM. Even on my channel, I have 20 plus videos on fine tuning LLMs. In this video, we're gonna focus on ORPO, odds ratio preference optimization. It's a very fairly new technique, you know, to fine tune an LLM for a downstream tasks or basically allying an LLM that might be the right word. I already have a video on ORPO. Let's jump into ORPO and see how we can find. I'm already fine tuning it. I'm not going to write a lot of code, guys, because the codes are going to be pretty standard. We're going to take some code from previous videos and whatever we have. And the code is available. Even Maxim has created a notebook, the creator of Merge Kit. And maybe I can share his notebook and go through the link. But I'll just show you that I'm right now, while creating this video, I am fine tuning it for a few steps just to trying it out. Let me show you what I am doing in this video. Now, we'll first go into it. But if you want to understand ORPO, you should watch this video of mine, which says ORPO explained superior LLM alignment technique versus DPO and RLHF. Okay. So basically, ORPO eliminates a need of a reference model that's a separate separate model for example if you go with a dpo direct performance optimization then you might need a reference model in that case first you fine tune using sft the base model you will take it fine tune using sft and then again you will use a reference model that becomes a bit of you know i mean that not at all costly when you compare this with rlha but at the same time it's complex because you need a separate model so there are different alignments techniques. Chat GPT were based on uh, RLHF. OpenAI has hired a lot of human annotators in Africa somewhere in Kenya, Ghana. I forgot the exact country, but they hired some annotators. They annotated the data, you know, reject, choose, reward, whatever. So RLHF is extremely costly. Don't go into the bandwagon of saying that even you can do RLHF. You can't. I mean, you need a lot of money to do that, not of you know good quality data to do that. So RLHF is costly, so we, let's eliminate that from the equation. Then we have DPO, PPO, you know, and different techniques that you can align an LLM. But those again requires a reference model. What ORPO does, you know, in the training phase, the fine tuning phase itself, you know, it basically eliminates a reference model. If you can just directly do it in when you are using TRL, SFT, whatever you are doing, you can just do it. Okay. So we have an ORPO trainer now that's a wrapper and that you can just use it now if you look at here you should watch this video okay uh, where i have aligned mistral 7b but here we're going to train llama 3 let me show you what i am doing guys okay so first thing is you need transformers data sets accelerate paved trl bits and bytes and when be weights and biases because i am also logging the logs in weights and biases just to see the how the performance has been the overfitting and things like that now, once you install that, I'm on A100. You need A100 GPU. You can also do it on L4 if you need, but then you need a smaller amount of data samples to do that. Okay. Now, scroll down. Here are all the libraries that I have imported. You can see I've imported Torch, Wendby, uh, load data sets because I'm going to load the data set from Hugging Face. I have user data just to take the secrets from the, the secrets, the credentials for Wendby. And then I have LoRa config PIFT model prepare model for KB training from PIFT parameter efficient fine tuning and then from transformers I'm loading all these library uh, modules like auto model for causal LM because we are going to do a text generation task it's not a, a mask language modeling or MLM kind of stuff it's a text generation thing then we have auto tokenizer bits and bytes config because we're gonna do this in a quantized way the model that we're gonna load probably then 
pipeline and then if you look at when I say quantize we're gonna use QLora guys probably in this now if you look at here we have from TRL it's a transformer library import orpo config now orpo config is part of TRL itself so you can just use that wrapper and I have authenticated with my wendb account wendb.login you can see this is where my wendb is I will anyway uh, this is where I have created a, my project you can see it's a new project called llama 3 so llama 3 is the project that is happening here once all of your logs will be recorded now scroll down a bit now what I am doing in this case I am saying okay if I am using the newest architecture of NVIDIA GPUs or the oldest one on based on Ampere architecture. So if you have A100, H100 and things like that, then you can use flash attention tool. So in my case, it is true because I am using A100. So flash attention will be supported. Flash attention is really critical because of the memory and the GPU compute that you need. It basically accelerates your training uh, phase. Now that's what I'm doing. Then I'm saying, Notebook login, there are two reasons for it because if you want to fine tune the base Llama 3 8B model, it's a gated repository. So you have to log in with your credentials. So I have already logged in, you can see it over here. And then what I'm doing next, I'm saying base model, take this base model, which is Meta Llama 3 8B, and I'm naming my model as Orpo Llama 3 8B FT. You can see it over here. And I have a bits and bytes config bits and bytes config load in 4 bit I'm saying true because we're not going to do a full fine tuning so we are saying load in 4 bit and I'm saying NF4 which is a data structure based on quantile quantization so I already have created a fine tuning crash course guys in fine tuning playlist you should def you must watch this video before any any channel you go on the YouTube or anywhere else, you should have basic understanding of this terminology, the data structure, the algorithms, how all of these things works, what are gradient accumulation, how do you decide a learning rate, what is NF4, what do you mean by rank, what do you mean by alpha, everything has been covered in that fine tuning video, please watch that, I'll, I'll give the link in description. Now I'm saying use torch d type which is bnb 4 bit compute and i'm saying use double quant as true next is i'm using lora config where i have a rank of 16 you can start with 8 and you can go with 64 if you go higher you need more compute to do that so i have kept it a pretty standard on 16 i'm using lora alpha dropout bias non task type causal lm as i said it's a text generation thing and target modules up projection downward projection get it projection everything you should also learn this i have that covered in the video what do we mean by target modules as we are not not adjusting the weights for each and every layer we are targeting a very specific modules which are compatible with llama 3 model you have to go through the research paper to understand this in detail what kind of target modules you can target for these kind of models now we have to specifically target these modules now i'm loading the tokenizer you can see tokenizer and loading the model let me bring my monitor. Yeah, so loading the model. In model, I'm using auto model for causal LM dot from pre-train. Base model quantization config, BNB config. I'm passing the BNB config that I've defined over here. If you look at this BNB config, I'm just defining it over here. And then I have a device map auto because whatever device map, you can upload something on CPU if you have a very limited compute. And then I have an attention implementation, which is flash attention too. And then I'm just loading the model in K-bit. You can see prepare model for K-bit. That's very important, guys. You know, you should learn all of these. Uh, watch my video, I'll recommend that. Now you can see that this is the model has been loaded completely over here. And then I'm using this data set, ultra feedback binarized by Hugging Face H4. So Hugging Face H4 has created a DPO specific data, uh, excuse me, uh, or PO specific or even for DPO, you can use this for DPO as well, ultra feedback binarized. There are different types of models that you can, uh, data sets, excuse me, that you can use it. Uh, you can go on Hugging Face, you can find it out. But I'm using this data set. It has, let me show you that data set probably quickly. You know, I'll just show you this data set control come here and paste it now this is the data set I am using now this data set has a prompt how can I develop a habit of drawing daily there is a chosen answer and there is a rejected you can look at the chosen and rejected column 
and you can look at the messages score chosen score rejected so each has a chosen and rejected how can i develop a habit of drawing daily so the role of you the content developing a daily habit blah 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 it goes like this so basically aligning the llm guys you know but you have to be really careful your data quality should be of top notch otherwise it might it might be biased a bit because humans have this inherited bias we in all of us right we have some kind of biases so if we create this kind of data we have to be really careful now this is the data I am using and I am having a data set. You can see it has around six, 61,000 rows for training and 2,000 for testing because I have splitted that. I don't want to use that much. So what I did, I did a bit of changes here. You can see I have a train samples only. I want only 5,000 to train. Uh, I need 5,000. I don't want to go with all the 61,000 because it will take a lot of time. This is the original train sample. Then I created a test sample, took a ratio of it. You can see here. And then what I am doing. I have a train subset, test subset, and then I have the train sub subset and test subset over here. And then you can see what I am doing here. I have a function called, and you can now see the number of rows has reduced to 5000 and number of rows for testing has been reduced to 163. Now what I am doing next is I need to apply a map here on the data set, chosen and rejected. You can see the rows, only rows we are applying it, chat template, the chat template is a function. Uh, it's basically a module in tokenizer class that we have and then what we are doing we are creating two data set zero and data set one basically these are nothing but the train and test set and then you can see the printed one 5163 and the thing is there now this is our orpo augs which are important you should you know you should uh, understand this a bit okay because these are See, I'll, I'll tell you a few insights. Now, ORPO, according to their research paper, ORPO recommends to have a, have a low learning rate when you compare that to traditional SFT or, you know, DPO kind of uh, technique. So, that's why we are using 80 minus 6, which corresponds to uh, 1E minus 5 in SFT thing. So, it's basically the similar stuff. Now, we have max length max prompt length you know if you have less compute you probably have to deal with this okay you have to reduce these numbers okay i have explained this guys you know training batch size this just in my period let me show you which video you should watch for that okay if you want to watch that come to ai anytime chat are you ready to, to learn video. this is the video you should watch which is here hyper parameter and training arguments i recommend you, you watch when i found video. hostinger and i found out about the website builder i was really blown away it made this is the video you should watch guys mastering llm fine tuning hyper parameters and training arguments if you want to understand each and everything about these that you have what are the optim that we are using why are we using paged adam and not only adam you know we have a max steps what are the difference between max steps and number of epochs or things like that so they are very important okay so this is what i am passing we are reporting to when the output directory result where all of these results will get stored blah 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 and then I have a trainer class. You can see Orpo trainer model argument passing the Orpo arcs train data set, eval data sets, PIFT config, and tokenizer. Okay. Now I am training it. You can see trainer.train, train.safe model, new model. It will take a, it might take a lot of time, guys, you know, to do that. But I've anyway, I've been running it. I'll see how much time it might take a might take a few hours, guys, to you know to get this completed. But we will do it. We'll try to, or probably I will reduce the number of uh, uh, steps. Probably we'll do it for 100 or 200 steps. Now, after the training is done, how can you add the? Let me just add text. How to? How to add? Uh, how to merge rather? How to merge LoRa adapters? Now, you will be. You will get a new model here and if you want to push that new model again with after merging the adapters how can you do that so first thing that you have to do you have to flush the memory so you have to do del trainer and model let me just write the code probably i'll give you this notebook so you can just reproduce the notebook you can just run it and just change the data set if you want to change the data set in that case gc.collect now we're gonna delete everything which is in the cache because the the cache has the volume in so we have persisted the volume in cache because we are storing all the weights in the cache now i'm going to do torch.cuda and dot empty cache this is of this is the thing that will basically delete everything empty everything in the cache and now we're going to reload so let me just write reload tokenizer 
and model excuse me and then here i'm going to do tokenizer equals auto tokenizer you can see from pre-train and then goes the base model and then i'm going to pass my model which is auto model for causal lm dot from pre-trained base model and i'm passing let me pass a few things over here i'm going to use low cpu memory use which is true return dict i will also make this true it's a boolean value you can see return dict equals true and then i'm going to have torch d type so torch d type torch float 16 and device map auto we do not need this because we are not going to train anything here so now this becomes your model and the model is fine now after that we're going to uh, uh model model tokenizer instead of chat format this is right so we did we do this and what else now we're gonna merge adapter with base model so we have the base model now so we're gonna merge it so let me just write merge and then model equals and then you're gonna use pift model so i'm gonna use pift model from pre-trained this is right model and not pift config this would be new model so we have the new model if you remember which is uh orpo 8b whatever that up see that on top now model is done now you're gonna use this model equals model dot merge and unload so if you do this it will be it will be adapter will be merged and unloaded now you can also push it to hugging phase because most of you asked me this question how to push this now for to push this on hugging phase guys you need to have an access token which the right privilege where you can write the uh, model into a repository so i already have done that push underscore two underscore have and then you're going to pass your new model thingy so just write new model and and then you're going to use huge temp directory as false okay huge temp dir this becomes false model does put and you can also push the tokenizer otherwise it will give you a config error if you don't do that push to have new model use temperature this is how you can push it guys now if you run this cell after the training is step once the training is completed you know i'll of course i'll give you this uh, notebook you can try it out now once that is done you can just uh, push it to hugging face and you can even try it out as well you can also use uh, uh, lm eval to eval it guys you know if you want to eval that okay uh, let me know if you wanna so we have llm auto eval we have a lot of evaluation guys okay you can see it by maxim laboni okay and you can see automatically evaluate your llms in google collab now this is how you can evaluate using this this notebook library whatever but there are other as well you can use open hub you can use n number of others uh, to evaluate as as well you have nos benchmark suit that you can use it to evaluate so feel free to evaluate that as well if you want to publish it on leaderboards wherever now this will take a lot of time guys probably i'll not wait for it but i just wanted to show you how you can do it let me just download this notebook i'll give it in the github rip through a github link or something you can see it has been downloaded now this is how if should i think you should watch orpo video for mistral first then you should watch this one and go through uh, implementing the notebook and you will have a fine-tuned llama 3 model now this is how you can push it on hugging face as well after merging the adapter okay that's all for and here you can before that here you can once that is done here it will be visible guys you can also ex uh, explore the logs and if you want to explore that but this is what it is guys if you have any question thoughts or feedbacks please let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channel find all the information on channel banner and channel about us if you like the content i'm creating please hit the like icon and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel guys that helps me you know to create more such videos in near future okay. thank you so much for watching see you in the next one